What is going on guys, Winterkills here, and welcome back to the third rendition of Top Replays and Highlights, where we will be going over some Top Replays and Highlights uh, from previous weeks uh, during the stream, uh, replays that happened during the stream, or any sort of moments that happened during the stream, uh, due to like music that I use on stream and copyright stuff. I won't be showing the clips in the video, but if you want to watch uh, any of the clips that I post uh, from this given week, um, some weeks there will be clips, some weeks there won't be clips, just if I've got enough pulled together uh, from previous streams. So uh, check those out in the description. There should be some for this video, at least three. So if you want to see those clips from some of the best moments that happened uh, in the previous weeks, feel free to check those out in the description below. Um, but we're going to be going over some replays, some games that happened on stream. And if you want to catch these sort of games live, feel free to follow me on Twitch, which you can find linked uh, down in the description as well. Uh, so without further ado, we'll take a look at our first highlight here, which is titled Lair vs. the Mech Boys um, versus Larry. Who else would we be playing? It's like all I play against is Larry, and he's watching this video right now, and he knows exactly what he's done. Uh, and so he was uh, destined to beat me, uh, I will say. Destined. I was on a win streak. I was on such a good win streak the other night and uh, last week or something like that and he had to pull out the big guns the deck that I literally always fold to and what deck is that it's layer of darkness well let's get started with this replay where he is going to, I believe I'm going to go first here getting started with sign up mining trying to bait out any hand traps but luckily he doesn't have any Draco net going through completely into Ib with the purple nightfall follow-up synchroing into the Ib and then into the morning star Using him to summon out Lee, then adding the World Chalice into Morningstar to ditch that World Chalice later to add back Key. Um, now, one thing I could have done is add the Spell Negator card, but I didn't really anticipate him activating this many spells. I was kind of thinking ahead, and he's going to have tons of traps for me to negate. Uh, so that's what I went with. I make a bit of a misplay here. I should have summoned the Indigo upon the effect activation of the Lilith, but I activated it too early. Um, and now I'm going to be able to activate the World Chalice here to uh, add back a banished or add back any World Legacy card. Now, as you can see here, the way I've got my Mech Knights on the board, I'm able to negate any trap that activates in the same column as a Mech Knight. Same thing with any monster effect going to another Morning Star, discarding that Red Moon to add a copy of World Legacy Secrets. Unfortunately, I do get a token to my side of the field because of Layer of Darkness, allowing that middle column susceptible to any sort of effects you want to activate, but luckily he does not have any at the moment. Layer of Darkness activating again. I do have to make a Tribute Summon here for the Indigo Eclipse to get that other token off the field, but what that is going to do is allow more tokens to get on my field during the end phase, which I wasn't thinking about. Uh, but luckily, one of the columns that the tokens was summoned in still has a Mech Knight in it. You can see he's going to activate Extravagance here. That's negated. Activate Metaverse over there. Negated because I've got all three fully locked down here. But he has a Super Poly in hand. And luckily, he has no discards for it. So we're able to swing for a game. I remember he was begging for me just to give him one more pity turn. But I knew he had something up his sleeve. And lo and behold, he did. It was the Super Polymerization. So... Nice try, Larry. Nice try. But yeah, that's it for that replay. A little bit of Layer of Darkness versus uh, Pure Mech Knight. And uh, as you can see, I draw the Crackdown. I think I sided this in. Um, I was still experimenting with the side deck at this point. I'm no longer playing this in the side. Um, but yeah, you can see, I think this is a very hard matchup for Pure Mech Knight. But you can see, with the right cards, grabbing that key to the World Legacy is essentially the key to the matchup. Because as you saw at certain points in that replay, I was trying to make sure my mech knights were in the same column as the set cards were. So if there were any trap cards that sprung up mid-combo, they would ultimately be negated. And uh, yeah, later on, just grabbing the whispers to sort of secure the deal there. You will negate spells as well. And uh, next turn, all he would have had to do is play that super poly in this column because there's no mech knight there. No way for me to get a mech knight there because these damn tokens... Uh, so yeah, could have been very bad, but luckily we finished it off when we needed to. Now we'll go into the next replay. Alright, so now we'll go into the next replay here, which is going to be another pure mech deck, me piloting that, versus Marincess. Like, full-on Marincess. A bit of Paleo in there, because it does fit with the archetype. But this is, a, uh, I think, one of the first times I'm showcasing uh, Marincess itself in its entirety on the channel. And it's actually looking to be a pretty good deck. I played against Marincess quite a few times. Uh, the last few weeks and I'm um, pretty surprised with the board is able to pull off and how uh, You know control like the deck can be especially with that Marincess wave trap card now as you can see here 
uh, opening Cyanat Mining, the Paleozoic Dynamiscus, Swap Frog, Marincess Seahorse, and Call by the Grave. So a pretty solid hand. You can see my hand over here, not the greatest. I've got Double Institution Sanctum. I believe this is when I was trying to experiment with making the deck a diehard going for a second. Also trying out the Artifact Engine in the main deck for that extra bit of stun factor, which I don't think I've kept since. But as you can see, he has Seahorse, Blue Slug, the, basically the full combo going off here. The one card into the link three and make it even better. He's got Blue Tang as well that's searchable off the Cyanet Mining. The field spell as well on top of that Swap Frog plays go into the Crystal Heart. And then this is the kicker right here. Going into Marbled Rock with the field spell which basically has all Merit Test monsters you control gain 200 attack. And also they gain 600 attack for each equipped Merit Test card you control in the extra monster zone that were Link Summon using Merit Test Crystal Heart as material are unaffected by your opponent's card effects. And then the last effect says when you Link Summon a Merit Test Link Monster uh, to the extra monster zone, you can equip up to three Merit Test Link Monsters with different names from your graveyard. And if we look at his graveyard, he does have uh, more than three Merit Test Link Monsters, including Crystal Heart, which if he decides to equip, will make this unaffected by card effects, which is pretty damn good. And then Blue Tang is probably one of the other, like the best starter cards next to the Seahorse as well, I would say. So as you can see, this is all going to resolve. That gets added back. Equipping three, including the Crystal Heart, and setting two. Now, luckily for me, he's given me a column, just sort of the nature of how his field is set up. Nothing he can really do about that. Normaling the crown into Link Spider, special summoning the Avram. Going into Morningstar, ditching that World Chalice, trying to get some plays going here. But Key coming back now to add back a Banish Mac Knight, going into Morningstar. And he draws probably one of the best and most underrated cards in the entire deck. Now, luckily, I have Artifact Sanctum to sort of wield off any plays that he might try to make. And luckily, I've got a purple and double Instant Fusion in hand. And I can sort of block traps, but I've only got one Mac Knight on the field to work with right now. If I would have been able to resolve that other Morningstar... Um, I, I would have been able to have a much better feel, but Marincess Wave is such a good card. It says if you control a Marincess Link Monster, target one face-up monster your opponent controls and negates the faction until the end of this turn. Then if you control a Link 2 or higher Marincess Monster, all face-up monsters you currently control are unaffected by your opponent's card effects. And then the best part, if you have a Link 3 or higher Marincess Monster, you can activate this card from your hand. And lo and behold, the turn 1 setup usually consists of this card of the Marbled Rock with the Field Spell in your best opening hand. And when you add Wave on top of that, not only do you have an Impermanence, you have an Impermanence that can always be activated from your hand. And you also have the ability to make all your uh, Marincess monsters, uh, oh no, just all face of monsters you control, period. They don't even have to be Marincess monsters, they're just unaffected by card effects. So... He goes to use the Marbled Rock here, which is going to try to add back a card, and it does. It's going to add back the Blue Tang. I go for Scythe, but he he got so lucky in top deck that wave that he's able to chain it to the Artifact Scythe activation, uh, which would be the only time he'd be able to negate it is on activation. As you can see here, now going into Shooting Code Talker, which is such a good card for this deck, but luckily Morningstar is sort of holding down the fort and why is shooting code talker such a good card because it is a water monster so you're not really locked into it goes into marincess wave again because he's able to add it back making all of his monsters unaffected by card effects luckily i have the world chalice to add back succession going into phoenix to get rid of that field spell and he's got called by the grave that would have been a plus two right there immediately or even a plus three i'm not entirely sure math is kind of difficult sometimes and then he's going into full combo here again, but luckily I've got secrets to sort of hold him off. Negating that blue slug, going for marbled rock, I slide it over so he can't get back that copy of wave. And, um, cause that would be the key thing, if he gets wave again, I'm gonna be in a, a big trouble. Uh, goes for trap trick, setting lost win, luckily I still have this key on the field. He does try to chain it, but luckily it's trying to resolve in the same column that mech knight is in. And we have the Red Moon to come in to clear that whole column, essentially. Moving it over with Indigo to clear another card, going into battle phase and swinging in even more. And with only this blue, uh, the sea, Seahorse in his hand and a permanence with no other cards in his extra deck at this point, at least no other blue slugs or Link 1s, uh, he is forced to scoop. Um, but we did actually play a game 2 of this match, and the game crashed, so we sort of had to draw... We played another match later where he ended up beating me, I believe, 2-1 or 2-0. Uh, so don't under underestimate Marin says people. It's a very strong deck. 
uh, and something that I'm probably actually going to pick up. Not only am I going to pick up just an enemy just to play in Mermals exclusively, but I'll probably pick up the rest of the deck uh, as a whole. Uh, and I would recommend getting most of the Maritess cards that come out in Rising Rampage. So when we get the rest of them in Chaos Impact, you're not left with having to pick up expensive cards because I have a feeling those prices might go up a little bit. So yeah, that's it for that replay. We'll go into the next one. All right, guys, so this next replay is Mermel versus Marincess. I am piloting Mermels, and it's actually a pretty interesting duel the way this whole thing ends up playing out. Uh, he has a very established board, and I have uh, the ability to attack one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. I can attack eight times. We'll just go ahead and get into this replay. He is playing Marincess, uh, Integer or Tiger. Uh, from the stream, if he's watching, shout outs to you for piloting this Marincess deck as I completely demolish it. Um, sort of. But as you can see here, he goes into the basic Marincess combo, Blue Slug, with the Seahorse, Coral and Enemy, even has the Field Spell with an Olenoides uh, Paleozoic Trap in hand, also having Call by the Grave and a copy of Gamma Seal. So he has the full setup, no Crystal Heart being attached. Luckily, Gamma Seal is such a good card against this deck. It just really is. Going for Megalo, discarding uh, Gund and Pike. Pike discarding that launcher. Going for Undyne off the Pike that I, you know, because the searchable normal summon is pretty cool, I heard, especially after resolving a card like Pike. Going into Alacia. Going into Whale. Now, at this point, I have five cards in my grave. Able to discard two, and then luckily I take out the Gamma Seal from his hand, which would have been devastating if I hadn't done that otherwise, because my Whale, which essentially is holding down the fort right now, would be gone. So we're resolving the Blue Tang, sort of Pot of duality uh, at the top of his deck, or like acting like a Salmon Grade Foxy. Going into another Marbled Rock here, and uh, just resolving a whole bunch of effects. Going to equip three more to it, bringing it up to 4,500 and easily running over the Moulin Glacia, which will make it so I lose my next battle phase. He does have Ash Blossom in hand, which is going to put a stop to my Teus play here. Trying to get something going, discarding that Abyss Mander, not going to do too much. Should have put that in defense, but luckily we resolve our Alacia here. Getting rid of that Megalo, just trading it out for a Teus as he goes off here and makes more plays. Adding a blue tang off of that blue tang, going into Transco Talker of all things, which is actually a pretty solid setup for this deck as it revives that Coral Anemone. Blue Whale holding down the fort, not blue whale, but the white aura whale resolving uh, here, banishing the Gamma Seal, and just allowing us to stay in the game. Also resolving that Alacia, sending Dragoons to revive that Mander at 2000 defense, getting us a copy of Prince or Diva. Diva activating now, going into Prince, sending Dragoons, adding a copy of Inf Infantry and Megalo, resolving this Teus here, linking it all into a Boral Sword, going into Megalo, discarding Gund, and uh, also Prince to revive two, tributing that Dragoons to add the uh, Lapis Dragon, summoning that, distribute again to attack twice. So in here, as it stands, we have a double attacking Megalo here. This can which make uh, make attacks up onto uh, monsters twice. This is attacking twice, and of course we know Boral Sword can attack twice. But what's the main problem here? This is game over and over and over again. But the one issue is that says when uh, Marincess Marble Rock states that when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can send one Marincess monster from your hand to the graveyard. Monsters cannot be destroyed by that battle. Also, you, to you take no battle damage from that battle. Uh, so yeah, and this is not a once per turn. So. He could do this as many times as he has Marincess monsters in his hand to activate. So you're going to see him do that here as he discards and uh, he uses it again. He could have used it again there, um, but it wouldn't make too big of a difference because I still have so many other attacks to activate. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just going to be game. Like I said, he could have probably discarded this other blue tang, um, but I don't know if he wanted just to ditch his last normal summon like that. Uh, because he would have just been left with this trap, the uh, the field spell, and the twin twister, which really doesn't leave him with much. And then he's just top decking. And then even if he still has a little bit of life points left over, I'm going to make Red Ice Flare Metal in main phase 2 and really secure the game at that point. Because he would still have a little bit of life points left, but just not that much. Um, but yeah, 8 attacks between all 4 of these monsters. So, pretty crazy. Mermel replay there. So that's it for that replay. We'll go ahead and jump in to the next one. All right, guys. So this replay is actually a replay from my stream. 
Uh, the replay itself on YGO Pro uh, doesn't work for some reason, uh, but this is a cool replay of a futuristic build of Invoked Mech Knight uh, being able to take advantage of cards from the Heroes of uh, Heroes Revenge set, the Battles of Legends set that we're going to be getting. Do showcase some new cards in this particular game, one of them being Lambda. As you can see, we go into the classic Alistair, Blue Sky, uh, the Process Layer player, which also happens to be Larry. I know you guys can't really tell, but it is Larry. Uh, and I made him go first because um, I just wanted to go second. I didn't really know what he was playing. As you can see, Almirage are in the extra deck there, along with Lambda. And uh, we have the perfect combo here. Going to Lambda with Blue Sky and Alistair, and then activating the effect of Lambda to, uh, you know, trigger during the end phase, which will allow us to add any Psyframe monster that we want, and it also allows us to activate the effect of Psyframe gear monsters uh, while we control monsters. So uh, it doesn't make our, you know, the card we add in the end phase completely useless because of the fact that we'll have a link in our hand. So now, uh, you know, Purple Nightfall is like the perfect card for this, uh, you know, card to go in tandem with, especially since Lambda says it just needs two monsters. Now, going into Invoked Mechaba. I've got to get over this 3k monster, uh, or else, you know, it's just going to run me over next turn. But I do have to ditch Alistair here to boost it up to 35, get over top of it. The effect to activate to add, a, I believe, any spell trying to activate there. Go ahead and negate that and just swing in over his level 4 division here with uh, Lambda. And then uh, we're going to be attacking directly uh, with... Uh, one thing that we could also do, and I, I'm not entirely sure how it would work, uh, as he activates the Super Factorial here. Uh, on this battle, which is going to allow him to summon three from his grave and then either synchro or uh, Ixies. Looks like he's going for two here, going to Ixies into the level eight, the Magma, uh, which isn't too big of a deal. He's going to use all of his effects in his graveyard to be able to boost it up, uh, you know, make the double attack and, you know, double its attack, etc., etc., which is fine. We're not going to attack into that card, anyways but it will stop us from attacking directly with Indigo because it is at 5,000 attack. Now, one thing I wasn't sure of as a ruling is that if we were to link away, per se, the Lambda and the Indigo here for Morningstar, Digicard, add Secrets on top of this, and would we still be able to add in the end phase? I don't know if Lambda needs to be on the field during the end phase to resolve. It's something I haven't tested yet. I didn't want to take any chances testing here. Uh, but as you can see, we do have Gamma in our hand, and we are able to use it because we have Lambda on the board. Um, I think I might have a secret set at this point. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but, like, imagine how much, like, better this could have been if we could have linked away the Lambda and something else uh, for Morningstar. Gotten another search of, per se, like, if we were going to play Whispers in the main deck, or if I haven't gotten secrets, grab secrets for another uh, chance at a monster negation. Uh, but like, I just wanted to make sure, and I wasn't sure at the time, maybe somebody in the comments knows already, uh, that you know, if we link away Lambda after activating its effect on field, yeah, we do have secret set already. Um, if we would even be able to resolve it. Would it resolve? Does it need to be on the field to resolve? Uh, which I'm assuming it probably does, but I'm not entirely sure. Activating Magma here. Uh, after it runs over the uh, Mechaba, I'm going to negate that. As you can see, we can summon things out here just like that and go ahead and negate it, fully resolving the effect. Another thing that I also do in this replay, I believe, is, is that I summon uh, Mechaba off of the Secrets because you can revive any level 5 or higher off of the World Legacy Secrets. It doesn't have to be just a Mech Knight monster. It also you just get the additional bonus of negating uh, anything that activates in the same column as a Mech Knight. So he plays the Process Layer Revival, or the Formula card, which is basically a Monster Reborn. And then going into the other level 4 monster, activating its effect there. And uh, I did place the uh, Psyframe monsters in kind of a weird position. I should have not have placed the Gamma in that extra monster zone, uh, because if he... If I didn't, I'd be able to use Indigo, use Secrets, and, uh, you know, revive uh, or something into that extra monster zone, which I did not think of at the time. But as you see, I'm reviving the Mechaba here. I'm able to negate the Multiplier, and now I also have a, an additional negation uh, of any monster effect because I've got Mechaba back on the board. And uh, he's going to activate Multiplier, which is going to double the attack. So I do have the, opti uh, the, action, um, the option, not the action. Uh, to negate which i don't think i end up doing um doesn't really make too big of a difference and end phase we get to activate lambda 
Now, this this at this point, I was only playing uh, one copy of uh, Driver because I didn't think I'd ever be resolving this more than once. And you know, I pulled it off in the first turn, which was so surprising to me. Um, so I'm now definitely going to play two Driver with the three Gamma um, because you do get that effect when the the side frames themselves banish themselves during the end phase. You get to search off that as well, add another copy of Gamma. So it's just this constant recycling of getting this basically you know Ash Blossom or like uh, you know really good effect valor to your hand and as you can see going into Purgatrio I've got so much damage on my field right now uh, it really doesn't matter he's gonna try and activate that uh, which I believe I negate uh, I don't think it matters if I need to go negate it though because he just gets to add a Rasta Slayer uh, spell or trap so that won't make too big of a difference don't really need to worry about negating that and just swinging in with a bunch of damage there so that is it for that replay and you can see I'm saving the uh, replay right there, but it's it doesn't work in YGO Pro, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, so, yeah, that is it for that replay, and now we'll go into the next one. Alright guys, so I've got another replay here for you, and this is going to be Pure Mech Knights versus Salamangrate, just showing you guys how incredibly insane of a lockdown Pure Mech Knights can put up against, especially against a deck like Salamangrate. And uh, what we do to the Salamangrate player, it's, it's kind of brutal. We really... We really just go to town here. It's actually pretty incredible. So he gets started here. He opens uh, Foxy and he's got Gazelle in hand with Roar and the Field Spell. So like, he opened Double Falco, which is kind of unfortunate. But like, other than that, his opening hand is pretty good. Full Salomon Great combo coming through here. Uh, Jack Jaguar returning Foxy here and going into Heat Leo, which is a, a little weird. I don't know why he decided to make Heat Leo first. Um, a bit of an off choice in my opinion. Now we did open up Crown by the World Chalice, but we also opened up Draconet. So Draconet is really nice because it can summon from the hand as well as the deck. So opening it isn't too big of an issue in this case. So we have Instant Fusion. I know he has Roar. Uh, I want to bait it out anyways. So the Roar instantly gone there. And now we are left to do full on combo here. Grabbing Secrets because I know we're playing against Salmon Great. And uh, no other traps seem to be on the horizon at the moment. And uh, discarding that World Crown, uh, World Chalice rather, to grab the World Legacy's Memory uh, to get my Purple Nightfall to resolve a Blue Sky eventually and going into the copy of uh, the Spectrum Supreme. He does use the Field Spell there to his advantage. Monster Reborn activating here to bring back Morningstar. Red Moon going off uh, to blow up the Mirage Stalia, which does allow him to resolve a Gazelle. But it doesn't matter. Now he goes into Pyro Phoenix, which is the new Salmon Great Link 4 monster that says if it's Link Summon using itself as its material, uh, you can destroy all cards your opponent controls. But little does he know, I've got the World Legacy Secret set, and uh, yeah, that's going to prove to be pretty bad for him. Now he does get to resolve Roar here, which is fine, so he's going to get to bring that back. I do change Secrets here, and I need to do it, so I'm going to opt to bring back the uh, indigo here now i've got pretty much every column but one with a mech knight monster in it. and i don't think my man's here read what the trap card did he goes into borlo dragon thinking it's going to help him tries to use the other effect of pyro phoenix that's going to get negated as well goes into battle phase try to use borlo effect and you know morning star effect and secrets effect all combining here uh going for a purple nightfall i play key He's forced to negate that or else he's not going to be able to activate any traps at all. Trying to use Borlo Dragon here and uh, just that Red Moon going to clear the Pyro Phoenix. Using the Spectrum Supreme to crash into the Borlo because of the Mac Knight Morningstar effect. And we just instantly annihilate him there. We have a full field of monster negations and a full field of spell negations. Could have been a full field of trap negations, but we kind of forced it with the Roar. And uh, yeah, that's going to be an easy, easy win of Mac Knights versus Salmon Great. So yeah, that's probably going to be the last replay for this video. I said, if you guys like these types of videos, please let me know down in the comment section below. Drop a like on this video. Let me know what you guys' favorite replay was in this entire video or your favorite moment. I'll go ahead and pin that top voted comment, whichever one it might be, and uh, maybe show it off in the next rendition. So yeah, let me know what you guys' favorite replay was. Let me know if you guys want to see more of these. I love making these and I hope you guys really enjoy them. I'll go ahead and run through real quick some of the decks that I showed off in this video. Here's Mermail, and we also showed off the Invoked Mech Knight. As you can see here, this is the futuristic build at 44 cards. 
Still running the double double super poly, double driver with a triple gamma, playing one El Mirage, one Link Karibo, and the Lambda. Uh, the Link pool is getting very, very shrunk um, because there is so many good fusions to play. Definitely want to play double Purgatrio and have two good super poly targets as well, and two instant fusion targets as well. So um, a very, very packed extra deck. And the uh, current pure Mech Knight deck list uh, right here. Um, so you can see it's changed quite a bit. Um, I haven't had a chance to test this version on stream yet, but if you want to see me test it live, like I said earlier in the video, check out my link uh, to my Twitch down in the description below, as well as the three Twitch clips I'm going to be posting for you guys to check out as well. Highly recommend you guys uh, check those out. And uh, yeah, I think that's all the uh, decks I showed off in here. And uh, like I said, if you guys want to see more of these, let me know. Appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate all the support. Almost at 9,300 subscribers as I'm making this. Really appreciate all the support, guys. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, as always, guys, we're going to kill Santa out. We'll see you in the next one.